So, Anakin, I can see you and your crew have been hard at work. Yeah, well, this is a great roof for solar. We've got a good southern exposure, not a lot of obstructions, and as you can see, a lot of sun. So we're going to be installing three arrays on this roof. We've got this first array of five, which we're all done with. We've got a second array of just one panel here, which I'm just putting the finishing touches on the electrical. And the real work today is going to be done over here on this array of four. We've already installed these stanchions, and essentially what they are is a lag bolt that goes straight into your roof rafters for a good strong connection, a big flashing that keeps everything watertight, and a stanchion that goes about six inches off the roof, and to that we install our racking. We attach our aluminum rails to the stanchions using stainless steel bolts. We square up the top and bottom and line up the middle ones to those. All right. So I've got 138. What do you got? I've got 138 and a quarter. All right, let's go for 138 and an eighth each. Okay. It's coming to me. 138 and an eighth. 138 and an eighth. Perfect. Yep. All right, let's even those up. All right, got it. All right, pull it through nice and steady. Got it. Okay. We've run all of our conduit and wiring for each of our arrays, and now it's time to wire up the panels. A typical solar panel takes sunlight and converts it into DC power, direct current power. But for it to be used in a house, we need to have it as alternating current or AC power. So in a typical installation, you have multiple panels that are wired in series with each other, and they feed down into a central inverter or something like this they'll be located down next to your circuit breaker. The downside with that is that if one collector gets shaded or if one of them malfunctions, it knocks out the entire array. That's right, well, we're doing something a little differently today. We're installing microinverters. They still invert DC power to AC power, but we've got one under each panel. What's great about that is that each of the panels are wired in parallel, not in series with each other so that if one does malfunction or one does get shaded, it doesn't knock out the entire array. That's right, let's go install them. The wiring for the microinverter is very simple. On the left-hand side, you have your DC connections which go to your solar panel. It's converted to AC power at this microinverter, which then travels out as AC current on this cord and plugs right into the main trunk right here. And we also have our six gauge copper wire that grounds the entire system, including the rails. Now we splice the trunk cable from this array to tie it in with the other two arrays. We just strip the wires and connect them with wire nuts. All right, let's get this panel in. All right, let's set it down. Pull right there. I got the panel. Okay, just setting this clip in place. All right, that's it for the last panel. Let's get down to the basement and finish the wiring. So down here in the basement, we've got our solar power coming from the roof, through this conduit, and into this meter we've installed. The homeowners already have an electric meter installed by the utility, but in this case, this one's measuring the solar production from the panels and it actually feeds data wirelessly back to the solar provider so they know exactly what's going on with the system. Right, and the four wires from the roof continue through the meter, and at this T, we've got the ground bonded here at the water pipe, and the other three wires continue through here and into this electrical sub-panel. The neutral I've already terminated here, and we've just got these two hot legs to land. And those are just gonna go into a standard breaker here, except in this case, it's gonna be back-feeding power to the house when the panels are producing. So I'll just terminate the two hot legs here. Now we can flip it on and see the meter kick up. There it is. 
meters on, we're producing power.